Hello and welcome to another edition of The Bibliophiles. Today we are going to be talking about The Saga of the Seven Sons by Kevin J. Anderson. That's, yeah, I'm, ta I'm going to be talking about the whole series because, you know, I, I've read it all, all of them, even the... Anyway, let me get to it. Book one, Hidden Empire. They... The humans and the adult and the Ildirans um, are working on a project to ignite gas giants and use them to and well basically turn them into stars so they can terraform planets and or like or moons around the suns and like live on them and stuff. But there's a bit of a snag. You see, turns out these gas giants, all of all of them apparently have life forms inside called hydrogs and when they set off this gas giant it made the, it really pissed them off because a lot of them died and now they're declaring war on the on the humans <clears throat> so so yeah there's um oh yeah and then there's to add another some more problems the gas giants uh, some of them have uh, this uh, gas called Tibana or Tibena or whatever, which allows them to use spaceships and use faster than light travel. So yeah, but any anyway, um, everything goes bad and it ends, you know, leaving you wanting to know more, obviously, and which leads and then there's book two. The Forest of Stars, or a Forest of Stars, I mean, and this thing is um, talking about is um, about the the human faction, which is called the Terran Hanseatic League, and the ruler is uh, the kings, but they're but it turns out they're not really ruled by kings. These kings are just puppets. And in actuality, there's actually this um, director type person who's in charge of everything. <clears throat> anyway, we, um, oh, also there's uh, this uh, group of uh, psychic tree priests people who can somehow communicate faster than light with psychic abilities using these trees or something which we later on learn more stuff about but like I said the hu the but the whole war against the hydrogs they are getting their ass kicked badly so then but then they get help from uh, these clickus robots these robots that were designed by this ancient race called the ancient bug like race called the clickus and they're the ones who gave them the technology for the torch, and they're the ones that, and they're now they're giving them technology for robots, which they can use to fight the hydrogs with. But they eventually, you know, get their at, but asses kicked some more. Still kind of barely holding their own. <clears throat> then there's in book three. When new more life forms sh show up, uh, the Wintels, which are water-based life forms, which fought in this big war against the Hydrogs a long time in the past, but then you know they wind up with a lot of them dying, and they have to they just hide in a comet somewhere out in space, only to be discovered by a small smaller group of Terrans called Roamers, which are like these nomadic merchant type people. <clears throat> anyway, um, and there's see, and there's book four, Scattered Suns. Um, not really much memorable about it. Um, book five, A Fire and Night. Book six, Metal Swarm. I almost forgot him. During this time, another race 
shows up called the Pharaohs, which are these uh, aliens that live inside suns, and they're also at war with the Hydrogues. <clears throat> but then eventually they uh, they get a um, come in contact with this group of rogue Illyrians that want to rebel against the current Illyrian Empire, and you know, they lose, but the last ship like runs off into a star, and they get taken in by the by the by the pharaohs. And um, oh, n another thing that um, is that like all of these aliens have the ability to somehow like morph humans and Eldirans and like turn them into like these avatar-like beings that can. You know, walk amongst them, but also, you know, talk to the talk to the planet roaming life forms. And then there's um, another race called the Verdani finally come in, and they're like these tree-based life forms. And there's um, like this one part where they actually become tree ships. And they like fly off and they go into battle and stuff. Then there's um, there's yeah, um, no, there's, like lot lot. There's like a, so many different plot lines that are coming in. There's the fake, you know, there's the fake um, here the fake um. Uh, Imperium or kings that are all being like actually they're the puppet kings that are being in the Terran Hanseatic League. There's a revolution in which a bunch of people are rebelling against the league. There's the Eldiran Empire and how they're kind of feel like they're decaying and growing old. And then there's the civil war that erupts from that. There's the uh, <clears throat> There's um, like a subplot about these archaeologists that explore ancient Clickus ruins. There's uh, the Clickus robots that wiped out their creators and, or for the most part, wiped them out. But then, and now are trying to destroy the humans, Eldirans, with with secret plans by digging up more of their more of their fellow robots and rebelling and killing off everyone. <clears throat> The war with the, where, where essentially the four elements are at war with each other, you know, uh, Hydrogs, Air, Wentles, Water, Pharaohs, Fire, and Verdani, Earth. Then there's the, then there's in the <clears throat> book six, I think it was uh, when the Clickus finally return and they start, you know, I I think they're like the Zerg from StarCraft, and they're just killing everyone. <clears throat> Eventually, they just go away. I guess I don't know, but yeah. Beforehand, before that, they like, do a lot of damage, and then there's, but and in the Ashes of Worlds, Book Seven, where all of this finally comes to a close, you know. And I thought they did a good job at that. You know, they go, they start the story, they have the beginning, middle, they end all of the plots. I I felt that they were all ended sufficiently well enough. And, you know. Oh, and of course there's a prequel comic called Veiled Alliances, which features things like the where we see the first contact with the humans and Ildirans, uh, the Romers getting their first sky colony, which they used to mine and process to ban a gas, which the which people use for as fuel for their starships to so they can use their FTL abilities. There's the um, is like uh, the getting the arc ships. There's the the uh, first 
tree priests that arrive on the scene. It was just, uh, <clears throat> yeah, it, I, I thought it did a good job at showing all this stuff and all the, this, I really enjoyed it. You know, each book ends with a cliffhanger that leads, that makes you want to read more and, <clears throat> and it, of course, is very, like I said, um, like you, you always want to see more, and by the end of it, it feels very complete. And all of the plot lines, or most of them that I think of at this moment, you know, they come to a close, they have a good conclusion, you know, there aren't really any questions about, like, what happens next, because everything is, everything, all the, everything just comes to a complete close and it feels very complete and satisfying and great and it's uh, highly recommended the series as total is five stars for me I loved it it was great and I would highly recommend it to anybody else who even like casual readers just just go out and read it or, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, um, till next time, I'm the bibliophile Jordan telling you all to read a book. <laughs>